Hi, everybody, and welcome back for another chapter of Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj's I Am That. And today we will be looking at chapter 83, which is called The True Guru. The True Guru. So, <laughs> my question is, without trust in your guru, would you have realized, after all, what you are, you are, whether your mind trusts or not? Would doubt obstruct the action of the guru's words and make them inoperative? You have said it. They would have been made inoperative for a time. And what would happen to the energy or power in the guru's words? It would remain latent, unmanifested. But the entire question is based on a misunderstanding. The master, the disciple, the love and trust between them, these are one fact, not so many independent facts. Each is a part of the other. Without love and trust, there would have been no guru nor disciple and no relationship between them. It is like pressing a switch to light an electric lamp. It is because the lamp, the wiring, the switch, the transformer, the transmission lines, and the powerhouse form a single whole that you get the light. Any one factor missing and there would be no light. You must not separate the inseparable. Words do not create facts. They either describe them or distort. The fact is always nonverbal. I still do not understand. Can the guru's word remain unfulfilled or will it invariably prove true? Words of a realized man never miss their purpose. They wait for the right conditions to arise, which may take some time. And this is natural, for there is a season for sowing and a season for harvesting. But the word of a guru is a seed that cannot perish. Of course, the guru must be a real guru who is beyond the body and the mind, beyond consciousness itself, beyond space and time, beyond duality and unity, beyond understanding and description. The good people who have read a lot and have a lot to say may teach you many useful things, but they are not the real gurus whose words invariably come true. They also may tell you that they, that you are the ultimate reality itself, but what of it? Nevertheless, if for some reason I happen to trust them and obey, shall I be the loser? If you are able to trust and obey, you will soon find your real guru, or rather he will find you. Does every knower of the self become a guru? Or can one be a knower of reality without being able to take others to it? If you know what to teach, you can teach what you know. Here, seership and teachership are one, but the absolute reality is beyond both. The self-styled gurus talk of ripeness and effort, of merits and achievements, of destiny and grace. All these are mere mental formations, projections of an addicted mind. Instead of helping, they obstruct. How can I make out whom to follow and whom to mistrust? Mistrust all until you are convinced. The true guru will never humiliate you, nor will he estrange you from yourself. He will constantly bring you back to the fact of your inherent perfection and encourage you to seek within. He knows you need nothing, not even him, and is never tired of reminding you. But the self-appointed guru is more concerned with himself than with his disciples. 
you said that reality is beyond the knowledge and the teaching of the real. Is not the knowledge of reality the supreme itself and teaching the proof of its attainment? The knowledge of the real or the self is a state of mind. Teaching another is a movement in duality. They concern the mind only. Sattva is a guna all the same. What is real then? He who knows the mind as non-realized and realized, who knows ignorance and knowledge as states of mind, he is the real. When you are given diamonds mixed with gravel, you may either miss the diamonds or find them. It is the seeing that matters. Where is the grayness of the gravel and the beauty of the diamond without the power to see and discern? The known is but a shape and knowledge is but a name. The knower is but a state of mind. The real is beyond. Surely, objective knowledge and ideas of things and self-knowledge are not one and the same thing. One needs a brain, the other does not. For the purpose of discussion, you can arrange words and give them meaning. But the fact remains that all knowledge is a form of ignorance. All knowledge is a form of ignorance. The most accurate map is yet only paper. All knowledge is in memory. It is only recognition. While reality is beyond the duality of the knower and the known. Then by what is reality known? How misleading is your language? You assume unconsciously that reality also is approachable through knowledge. And then you will bring in a knower of reality beyond reality. Do understand that to be, reality need not be known. Ignorance and knowledge are in the mind, not in the real. If there is no such thing as the knowledge of the real, then how do I reach it? You need not reach out for what is already with you. Your very reaching out makes you miss it. Give up the idea that you have not found it and just let it come into the focus of direct perception, here and now, by removing all that is of the mind. Mm -hmm. You need not reach out for what is already within you. Your very reaching out makes you miss it. Give up the idea that you have not found it and just let it come into the focus of direct perception, here and now, by removing all that is of the mind. Remember, you are nothing perceivable nor conceivable, nothing physical nor mental. You are that which makes all perception possible. Just allow reality to come into focus. It's what you are. There's no reaching out. It's not outside of you. It is you. You are the absolute supreme being. You are the Parabrahman. Nisargadatta is telling you this. Look within. Stop going outside of yourself. Look within. Sense this awareness. Sense this beingness. Sense this presence. Sense this aliveness. Stay here, stay silent. You are silent, still, spacious, space-like, vast awareness, pure being, no self, 
no person, no entity. Rest. Stop seeking outside of yourself. Simply rest. I am that I am. 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 Oh. When all that can go goes, what remains? Emptiness remains. Awareness remains. The pure light of the conscious being remains. It is like asking what remains of a room when all the furniture is removed. A most serviceable room remains. And even when the walls are pulled down, space remains. Beyond space and time, is the here and now of reality. I love paragraphs like this that just spell it out so clearly. Emptiness is now. Emptiness is. Sense it. Awareness is. Sense it. Sense the awareness, sense the pure light of the conscious being. If you take everything out of this room, what remains? Space, a most serviceable room remains. And if you knock down the walls, what remains? Space. So you are this empty, vast space prior to the body, during the body, and after the body. You are the eternal. You are the Parabrahman. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Om Shanti 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 Om Peace, Peace, Peace. Oh. Nothing being everything, absolute being the relative. This is the absolute. This is nothing and everything. And you are that. You are beyond space and time. You are beyond all concepts. You are the vast, egoless, unmanifested ground of being. Empty, empty, and yet full to the brim. Stop returning to the mind of concepts. Stop going back to the self-image. Let it go. Let it stop. Let it die. It's unreal. You can only lose what you are not. Only the false can die. You are the true. Let it all come. Let it all go. And find out what remains. Find out what is right now. Awareness. Beingness. Consciousness, intelligence, creativity, love. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om peace, peace, peace.
Thank you, Nisa Gadatta Maharaj. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you again for another chapter of Sri Nisa Gadatta Maharaj's I Am That. Om Namaste.